Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glue. Recently, Creative Me sent me this Sonic Pad in exchange for an honest review, and here I am to share my thoughts on this device. So, I use 3D printers on a daily basis, uh, usually for lots of quick prints of pieces I use in my robots. So, I'll share my views on the context of my daily use. It's a bit specific, but could be the same if you're a creative person who uses a printer for prototyping. Of course, let's begin with a quick unboxing, and as you can see, the unit is very beautiful and it has some decent size display. I also really love that its design matches the Ender 3S1 that I already have, so they'll look amazing together here in my shop. And while we're talking about design, let me give a shout out right here to this clever solution for the AC adapter and the different plugs users might need. It's awesome stuff. And of course, here's an overview of everything that came in the box. Now setting up this thing is very straightforward, you just have to follow carefully each step of the manual. Now I will make right here a full tutorial on how to set up your Sonic Pad, because frankly uh, there are much better videos on that matter right here on YouTube. But I do want to point out something that I face on my setup, which is that there are like two different versions of the Ender 3S1 on the Sonic Pad setup, and the only way to know, as far as I know, uh, the model you have is to open the bottom of the printer and this can be a painful uh, process. Just remember to empty your tool tray before doing all of that and after a while I managed to get right in there and it is uh, this chip right here uh, kind of uh, to the right side of the board that you have to look for and I have the 401 chip. Once I had that figured out, I could keep going uh, with this setup. Now, as I said, I won't make a full tutorial of this setup, but I do want to show you guys some of the steps that seemed very interesting to me on this process. Like the bed leveling, which my printer already did using the CI Touch, but now with this uh, visual representation, uh, it makes the whole process much more intuitive. And also this little thing right here, which I believe is some sort of accelerometer. You need to attach it to the different axes of the printer and of course uh, plug it on the back of the device. And the idea is that using this sensor the Sonic Pad will perform some vibration tests on your printer and use the results together uh, to make your printer better, especially on faster speeds. The shaking, so to speak, is so fast that it's almost invisible to the naked eye and while I don't understand exactly what's going on, I just thought it was very interesting and wanted to show you. There are two things that I really like about this device. Well, actually there are three, but I'll focus on the main two for now. Speed and print management. Let's begin with speed, which is very straightforward. The Sonic Pad runs on Clipper firmware, and it's powered by a 64-bit operating system. All of that coupled with the accelerometer test, and of course a good setup in terms of hardware of your printer, uh, will allow much faster printing speeds. Now, of of course, you gotta test different speeds and slicer settings and see for yourself, but I've been able to shave off a lot of print time and still get very good results in terms of print quality, as you can see in this piece right here. Now, to put that speed gain into my contacts, which is basically using a printer to quickly put out lots of different pieces to use in my builds, often having to test, print and reprint some pieces, the speed gain provided by the system will help me a bunch on the projects. I'll be able to put out more pieces on the time I have on the shop, and with that, I'll move faster through my projects. So, like for instance, right here, I was trying to print this huge piece for a rotary table, and I was able to to shave off one full printing hour from it, like this is almost 30% less print time and keep in mind that these are my first tests with the device and I'll still be able to shave even more time from the prints uh, when I get to, to better know the two. My only advice right here is for you guys to use your own print profiles on your slicer of choice. I tried using some downloaded profiles and the results were terrible. Use what you already have and that works for you and for your printer and then adapt it from it and try to shave some print time at changing the settings. 
Now, in terms of print management, one thing that I really love about it is wireless printing. This might not seem like super important, but to my context, this is very helpful. While I'm working on my builds, I'm constantly designing different test pieces, so to be able to quickly prototype and set up prints without having to worry about SD cards or USB cables is very freeing. Also, as I have some files that I'll have to reprint from time to time, to be able to have that uploaded to the device and then quickly find it on the browser and send it to the printer, let me tell you, this is something that I've been dreaming about. And that leads me to the browser aspect. See, you can control your printer from the Sonic Pad itself and it works really well with the touch screen and all, but to be able to use your browser to access the device is a game changer for my workflow. And you can not only send the prints, but also think it around and change configurations and experiment with it. To be honest, I barely scratched the surface on this device. There are tons of possibilities uh, with this one that I either haven't tried or that I'm still learning how to do. Like for instance, a macros, which is basically setting up different routines for your printer that you can access with a single click, or even time lapses uh, that I haven't really tried as I don't have a webcam for it. There is a lot to be done uh, with this and it will get better with time as the device is receiving constant updates. All the testing I made, I ran through a couple. But this is for sure not a device for beginners. I'd say this is aimed towards the heavy user, who prints on a daily basis and who could benefit from the speed gain and the print management. Someone who knows their way around 3D printing and can think it around, play with the settings and do a bunch of testing. Big thanks to Creatorly for hooking me up with this amazing unit and thank you for watching.